we go, chapter three. And chapter three is going to be about functions and graphs. And you're going to see that a lot of this is going to look very familiar because now what we're doing instead of an equation like y equals um, 3x plus 5, we're going to just turn that y into an f of x. Okay, so a lot of this will look very familiar. You'll start out with functions, which you will see, you know, certainly a lot of different applications. We will talk about the domain, which are the inputs. Okay, so what values can x equal? And then we'll also talk about uh, the range as well. Whatever you put in for x, what you can actually get out. So as you can see here, I'm just going to bring all of these up is that if you can plug anything in, which I don't see any reason you can't plug any x in to this first one, then the domain, we just say all real numbers from minus infinity to positive infinity. The only time you really have to be careful is either if you're dividing, because you can't divide by zero, and or square roots, because remember, you cannot take the square root of a negative number. Again, we will have lots of examples, example videos to help you understand these better. Then we get into the graphs, and again, a, a linear equation that you looked at is the same as going to be the same as a linear function. We'll have that same format, that mx plus b. Um, you can have these piecewise functions. I always thought of something like this, like you have a machine that's running, and then you slow the machine down. Okay, or as, as it's starting to turn off, the pieces do not always have to connect. Okay, um, we've used before the square bracket that you include a value, but on a graph, it's a solid dot, meaning that is actually included. The open circle means you get really, really close to that, but you don't include it. And that's where you can see the difference between the less than and equal to and then the greater than. Uh, piecewise functions are used a lot where this could be something, as you can see, the weight of a package depends on the cost. And so as the weight goes up, the cost goes up. Many different looks to many different types of functions. And again, trying to get uh, to the point where we can use these in applications. How you can tell something is a function is when you put in one input, you only get one output. And there is actually something called the vertical line test. So if you put a vertical line across your function, notice when I put in 1x, in this case 3, I can actually get two different outputs. So this would be an example of not a function. And many times you will see what we do is we just say, well, let's just look at, um, you know, from negative 1 maybe to 2. You know, so, you know, we're just trying to get to a point and we're only looking at positive y values. And then, of course, we get into applications. You have kind of seen this already with equations where we talk about break even point, big area uh, with functions, many different applications, supply and demand. Then as we get through the linear, you kind of get more into different types of functions, quadratic. These are used a whole lot. Um, definitely something that you're looking at minimum values or maximum values. And again, you can go in and you can make a table and plot different points. But what's nice to notice is you're going to see on the next slide, if the x squared, so that's what makes it a quadratic, each one of these are squared. If it is positive, then the parabola, which is this, um, opens upward. If it's negative, it opens downward. And that's what all this is saying. Okay, so this is telling you if your the value of A is positive, then it opens upward. Otherwise, it opens downward. And many different, you're going to see many different things with quadratic functions. I mentioned finding maximum and mins. We can do that with where the vertex meets with this formula. So you will see this formula once again. And that very quickly can help you find a maximum value, say maximum profit or minimum Minimum could be if this opens upward, the bottom vertex, um, to get a minimum cost. And then we get into polynomial functions. 
which are just not linear, um, quadratic, uh, can be called polynomial functions, but these are typically where we might have something like x cubed. Once again, we can make a table. A lot of these graphs you will see repeatedly over and over and over, and so you want to, you know, kind of get, I, I don't really, I'm not one of those that say memorize things, but as soon as you see x cubed, you kind of know what it looks like. x squared, the parabola, x a line. Uh, rational functions, these are very important when we talk about domain because you cannot divide by a zero. So notice what happens if you plug in negative one with this graph. That's how you're getting an asymptote here. So we'll talk about where the line, the function is hugging really, really, really up close to this value, the vertical asymptote, and then we'll also talk about horizontal. So just a quick overview on what's to come. I know you're excited and let's get started with functions.